Welcome to this week's edition of the Weightlifting Platform, where we ask the question, if Pyrrhus Demas was a country, how would he rank at the Olympics? Well, if you go by golds, he'd be in 16th place. If you go by number of medals, he still ties for 35th. The Weightlifting Platform is brought to you by the Pan American Weightlifting Federation. I'm your host, Richard Mason. On this week's show, we'll sit down with a medal-winning Kiwi who's hoping he can be the first ever New Zealander to get on to an Olympic podium at a weightlifting venue. For our tip of the week, we'll ask a nutritionist if your carbs should be loaded up like your barbell. And for our regular feature, good to know the one rule violation in weightlifting that can get you immediately thrown out of a competition. But first, here are the headlines. The International Olympic Committee has approved the International Weightlifting Federation's proposal for Tokyo 2020 qualification. Due to the pandemic, many of the events around the world were cancelled or postponed, creating potholes on the road to Tokyo. The new system reduces the number of gold, silver, or bronze competitions that athletes needed to participate in down from six to four. To be eligible, athletes needed to participate in meets in the first segment between November 2018 to April 2019 the second segment between May 2019 and October 2019. The athletes' ranking points will be added up from their best results in period one, best results in that second period, and their next two best results from any time between period one, two, or three. Once you have those numbers, athletes will be chosen based on their overall ranking, continental place, host country spot, and tripartite invitations. Countries are limited to the number of athletes they can enter, so the strongest nations like China will make strategic decisions, possibly leaving some metal hopefuls at home, while other countries will need to wait to see who those strongest nations choose to know who from their country might qualify. A number of processes take place between early June and early July before we know who will be on the platform at the Tokyo International Forum this summer. The United States is changing how they prepare their athletes for Tokyo. The USA had secured a site in Tokyo to ask, ask act as their home away from home with their own platforms, their own trainers, their own amenities. But with the pandemic comes change, as family and friends now won't be allowed to join their Olympians in Japan for their final push, USA has pivoted, instead hosting a prep camp in Hawaii, so the friends and families of the USA weightlifting Olympians can be around them in their final preparations. Peru has lost a key member of their weightlifting family, Secretary and Vice President of the Peruvian Weightlifting Federation. Antonio Ribaza has passed away. He was also president of the Trujillo Weightlifting League and an IWF Category 1 referee. You will be missed. May you rest in peace. Those are today's headlines. Now, good to know. You could throw chalk at the loaders. You could say bad things about your coach's mother on the platform. You could even refuse to leave the platform for 30 minutes after your lift. If so, the IWF president, general secretary, or competition director will sanction or reprimand you under Rule 759. But what if you want to get thrown out of a weightlifting competition immediately? Well, all you have to do is violate the one rule where that could happen, 665, better known as the 20 kilo rule. That rule states, if an athlete isn't in compliance where the opening attempts in the snatch and the clean and jerk don't come within 20 kilos of the entry total, quote, the jury will exclude the athlete from competition. In fact, the regulations state that if notified that the attempts don't add up and there's a refusal to make it right again, I quote, the athlete is eliminated from the competition immediately upon refusal. That's good to know. Now, time to talk. As of the Commonwealth Games and the Gold Coast in 2018, David Leite is the strongest man in the British Commonwealth. He's a super who twice in 2019 posted totals of 400 kilos. He now joins us from New Zealand. David, welcome. Thank you for having me. Now, first off, tell me, let's go way back or not so far back. Let's find out. How did you get started in weightlifting? 
Um, I actually, one of my friends uh, did weightlifting uh, through my coach Tina who runs a free uh, weightlifting course um, through my high school and so one of my friends invited us and we, me and all my friends showed up, it was about 20 of us um, and we all yeah quit within less than 7 days or less than 14 days I, I must say. Um, because we thought we were doing, you know, bicep curls and bench pressing to get really big muscles, but we ended up doing snatches off the, with a stick. And um, as a kid, that was kind of boring for for myself. But yeah, that was 2010. Um, stopped weightlifting all the way up to 2013. Uh, showed up to training maybe, you know, like once or twice every two months or or a month. Um, but then, yeah, got stuck into it after I finished high school. Um, early 2015, I came back from my uh, home country, Tonga, um, and I decided to fully commit to weightlifting. And so I started off with three days a week. Um, by the end of 2015, I was doing uh, nine sessions a week. So, um, and I've been yeah, doing that ever since. Now, what, what, what made that change in your head? What, where, how did you go from... Uh, I'm not interested in that at all to, yeah, this is something I'm going to do almost full time. How, how, how did that, what made you decide that? Uh, a lot of the things that uh, helped was the talk I got from my coach. Um, there's one thing that she said was that I want to be another number on the field playing rugby or that I want to be a world-class weightlifter. And that uh, got my attention, but also... I was, you know, sick of being called the fat kid um, that'll grow up and just be a, a potato, a couch potato, and and I'll never amount to anything. And so I wanted to to really show people that um, you can come from nothing and, and still, you know, make it and succeed and make something out of yourself. Now, last week on this episode, we talked about the relationship between a new athlete and her coach. Your story can't be told without uh, talking about the special relationship that you have with your coach, Tina Ball. Now, in the back room and wherever I've seen you guys together, you guys seem closer than the average coach and the average athlete. Um, does it feel like that? Does it feel like you've got a special relationship with Tina? Of course. Um, to be able to you know, have a, a really good coach, you, you'll have to have some sort of trust and... Um, that trust can't be just ordinary trust. It has to be beyond um, more than, than normal uh, to, for her to work out your numbers and give you the best total you can to position yourself in the highest, you know, highest position you can get in the competition. Um, and I guess that, that has led me um, a few years into the sport. And now that I've moved in to stay with her to, you know, better my weightlifting and, get um, more focused in, in training and things like that so yeah um, I've been now at her house for almost four years does she know you're there you're are you like in the attic <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just sleep in the garage <laughs> <laughs> now let's go back to Gold Coast uh, in in Australia's Damon Kelly it's his home games. It's his. It's his yeah. place. It's his platform. Had you beaten uh, Damon Kelly prior to 2018? Had you ever lifted more than he did in the same comp? No, um, I have been in one competition where he was at was come off champs where he was a senior. I was a junior, and so he took out the seniors. I took out the juniors, and the other competition was. <clears throat> In Oceania, I was still a junior then, and he took out seniors, but I came second in the juniors. Um, and going into Australia 2018 Commonwealth Games, I had to prove something, you know, um, especially New Zealand and Australia having a rivalry and stuff like that. Um, I wanted to let them know that, you know, the Kiwis are here. The Kiwis are here to stay. Now, you didn't do it on six attempts, though. You didn't need no. six attempts. What what happened? No. You, you didn't come out for one of your attempts. Um, that was the game plan. The game plan was oh. that if we didn't push, if we didn't push, they wouldn't push. You know, 
Um, mm. And so that uh, also led us to have a one kilo difference between first and second, where I was coming third at 174, and the other two was at 175. <clears throat> and they both also missed, I think it was 180. Um, and so coming into the clean and jerk, uh, we were confident that I will beat these two, and I was confident in myself as well. So, yeah, everything just fell into place, and the rest is history. Awesome. Now, 2019, uh, back when we used to lift, you remember, uh, seemed to be the best time, the <laughs> worst of times for you. You had two totals in the 400s, Worlds at Pattaya and in Qatar. But at the Oceana Senior Champs and the Pacific Games, you didn't clean and jerk. Um, what did you learn from the good experiences, the huge totals, and what did you learn from mm -hmm. not having a total? Um, I guess the biggest lessons was, um, and especially in 2019, I was really finding a rhythm with being happy on the platform because before come off games, I was always you know, nervous and well, I'm worried about this and that, and I was never confident with my snatch, but being able to win come off games and being able to tell myself that you know, no matter what happens, um, I'm still going to be proud of myself. So 2019 was a lot of that uh, practicing, you know. Um, I will be proud of myself with whatever total I do here and here and there. But when it came to Samoa, there was four lifters, um, and I was one of them. It was really hot, it was really humid, and the time was ticking, you know, it was super fast. And especially in, in, in the hall that we were in, the hall had air cons every two meters around the building okay top level and lower level but none of them were on so it was really hard inside you know um and i guess that played a big part of uh taking strength out of my legs and recovering um and yeah managed to uh, just get uh silver in the snatch but messed out with uh three misses at 220 clean and jack so the the lessons were be happy on the platform and turn on the air conditioner. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, I know it's a, n nobody knows anything yet when it comes to Tokyo. We just got the new, uh, the new system all sorted out. Yeah. Um, what are your odds? Like, where are you at? Because I know you're, you're, you're down the list when it comes to the Supers yeah. worldwide, but continentally, yeah. uh, you're the pick of the litter. So wh what, do you, what are yeah. your odds for going? And, uh, and do you think that if you get to go, that uh, being in a close time zone to, to your own uh, will be an ad advantage? Um, yes, I am number one pick for my weight class in my continental sport. Um, and it, it all depends on um, what uh, the New Zealand Olympic Committee says and, and um, if they accept my application to, to you know, um, go to the Olympics. Um, I'm going to do my fitness test, which is only 85%, um, in two weeks. And I know for damn sure I'm going to smash that. And then from there, they're going to send in my application to New Zealand Olympic Committee. And then they will see if they want to accept. Um, but yeah, I'm 99% sure that I'll be at the, that I'll see everybody in Tokyo. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for uh, a high placing after Tokyo, so it, it's all on. Perfect. I appreciate you taking the time. Now, don't go away. We're going to have to get you to stick around as we put you on the clock next. Uh as you've seen, what, what we do here is we put you on a one minute clock the normal pressure for a weightlifter, a one minute clock. But now we're going to ask you some <laughs> questions. Some of it normal weightlifting stuff, some of it not so much. Are you ready? Let's do this. In three, cool. two, one. David, least favorite exercise? Oh, no. Back extensions. Okay. If you had to choose just one, North Island or South Island? Of course, North Island. What do you mean? Just checking. Favorite sport outside of weightlifting? <laughs> Rugby. Rugby? 
Uh, Nando's or KFC? KFC for sure. Okay. Uh, now, New Zealand athletes like the All Blacks and the Tall Blacks basketball team do a pre-match haka. You're from Tonga through New Zealand. Do you know the haka? Can you dance the haka? Yeah, I know a little bit of it. I, I have, we have done it in a few competitions. So I'd say okay, yes. Okay, okay. Okay, we, we won't ask you to do it right now. Uh, favorite place that you visited through sport? Uh, Samoa. Samoa. And if you bought your coach a pet, what type of snake would it be? <laughs> It'll be a king cobra. <laughs> uh, in case you don't know, uh, his coach has a, an aversion to snakes. And, uh, and, and I think David's a little bit of a trickster, so... Uh, I think that's why we're there. <laughs> Thank you very much for taking the um, time to talk to us. We, we right. do appreciate it. Thank you. Carbohydrates. How much is too much? How much is not enough? Surprisingly for weightlifters, the answer may lie in your body weight category. Here's nutritionist James DeLacy on how many carbs you need. Hey everyone, my name is James DeLacy. I have a master's in sport and exercise science. And my tip of the week is about nutrition for weightlifters and specifically carbohydrates. Now with the low carb and keto craze that has gone around recently, some weightlifters might be opting to lower their carbohydrate uh, intake, but this is gonna be detrimental to your weightlifting performance. Now, obviously we know weightlifting is, requires high levels of strength, speed and power. And with that, carbohydrates are your main energy source to fuel this. Now, a simple way of getting more carbohydrates in um, without just, or other than just your normal daily intake, is to use intra-workout carb, something similar to this. This is a multidextrin carb. You can use dextrose or anything that is fast digesting. The powder is easy to consume. We know that weightlifters typically have longer training sessions than many other sports, hour and a half plus of lifting heavy loads quickly. So having a carbohydrate during your training can help fuel you, uh, fuel you throughout your training session. So how do we know we're eating enough carbohydrates each day to fuel our weightlifting training? Well, the easiest way to do this is to calculate your maintenance calories. And you can estimate this just by taking your body weight in pounds, or if you already know your body weight in kilos, multiply that by 2.2. And take your body weight in pounds and multiply that by 15 or 16. And that'll give you a rough estimate on your maintenance calories um, to intake each day. Now, firstly, we uh, calculate our protein intake, and that can simply range between 0.8 to 1 gram per pound of body weight. So again, you just make that calculation. From there, we take our maintenance calories again, and we're going to multiply that by 0.25, which is 25%, and that'll give us our fat intake. Once we have those two, the remaining calories left over will be our carbohydrates. Now, there will be some calculations on the screen that will make this a little easier to follow and understand, but that's a general way and an easy way to estimate your carbohydrate intake and to be able to maximize your diet to prioritize having a carbohydrate intake while maintaining muscle mass. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of the Weightlifting Platform, brought to you by the Pan American Weightlifting Federation. If you like what you see, bookmark us here at IWF on YouTube, well, you could also like the IWF on Facebook. Tweet out to the IWF at IWFNET on Twitter. I'm Richard Mason. Good lifting.